Yeah, you know, it's crazy. These guys are going down like crazy so often, you know, and uh, they just want to get to the regular season. That's a big hit for the Packers. Let's let's not mention it. He almost had 100 receptions last year, and he's the favorite target of Aaron Rodgers. So uh, they're going to have to have other guys step up. Ty Montgomery, I know they're looking for him. Devontae Adams. Yep. Uh, there's two guys in particular that they're looking to get the football to, but I still don't think that's one of the most explosive offenses in the National Football League. When you when you look at the NFC as a whole, and you look at the quarterback play, and look every every team is driven by uh, quarterback play in, in the NFL. But you look at Seattle and, and and Russell Wilson, and it seems like I'm not going to say there's dissension there between him and some of his teammates with that big contract. But we heard Bennett come out uh, have a couple words regarding quarterback play because he just sounds like you know look he's an average defensive end taking shot at right now pretty average quarterback in Sam Bradford. Uh, but you can tell he's kind of ticked off that Russell Wilson is getting paid. When you look at the Seattle Seahawks, when you look at uh, the loss of Nelson now with the uh, Green Bay Packers, uh, you know you still have the, the Saints maybe taking a step back. Drew Brees is not getting any younger. Every, we we know those 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 big time quarterbacks, but then there are a couple of young guys in there: the Cam Newtons, the RG threes, and the Bridgewaters. And I think Bridgewater is poised with the, uh, I guess you can say the comeback. Uh, with Adrian Peterson that their offense can really click. I don't think they're going to ask him to do a lot this year, but I, I know it's everyone else's sleeper, but would you agree that maybe just kind of going under the radar quietly or the Minnesota Vikings? Well, Minnesota's doing a great job, Rich, in terms of building a team. And they got Mike Zimmer in there who's from the Cowboy way. He developed the defense for the Bengals, and now he's doing that with Minnesota. First and foremost, they have one of the best young defenses out there set at linebacker and, and defensive line as well as safety. So they're attacking defense, and they do have Teddy Bridgewater, who did make a nice leap last year playing the quarterback position. He looked competent. We haven't seen many quarterbacks come from NCAs and do a lot lately, but he came in and did a nice job. And then they bring in Mike Wallace to help him out, as you're saying, to get Adrian Peterson back. So definitely that's one of the teams I have listed as one of my sleepers in NFC and uh, in that division, let's face it, you know, yeah, the Packers are the cream of the crop, but they definitely could be challenging the Lions, who, you know, they had that second spot for quite a while mm-hmm. in that division. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Wallace. That's a, that's a, uh, he, he still has that speed. That's, that's a good acquisition as well, veteran uh, wideout. What about, you know, quietly again, the Arizona Cardinals hoping, uh, you know, they can get uh, a healthy quarterback. I mean, you, you look at the Arizona Cardinals, and Arians did a wonderful job last year with all those injuries. If they had, any type of assemblance at the quarterback position, they won a playoff game last year. And it just, you know, this is a team that scratched and clawed their way to 11 wins. What's the expectation in Arizona this year? Well, there are high expectations, and that's who Bruce Arians is. He's a guy who demands results, and he wants them from his quarterback position. I know Carson Palmer's around 35 years old. He's got to stay healthy for them this season. They, they really don't have a lot of guys behind him. I know Logan Thomas is there, a guy they kind of like from Virginia Tech, but he's a young quarterback. And it's going to take him a while to grow into that position. So if they have Carson Palmer, as you were saying last year, won a lot of games with him and then limped down the stretch with Ryan Lindley types at the quarterback position. But they're trying to build something there with Duke Johnson as their running back and, and some other young guys they brought in. But so explosive in the wide receiver core. And then defensively with guys like Kel Ellis Campbell, they can get after anybody. 1.30 on a Friday uh, edition of the warm-up. Again, live inside the all-new Mercedes-Benz of Atlantic City Studios. Rich Canyon's PG will take up to 2 o'clock. Lloyd Vance, contributor writer, does a good job covering the NFL for the NFL Network. Uh, joins us for a couple moments. Uh, let's switch gears a little bit to the uh, AFC side of the football. And a lot of people thought uh, prior to this whole uh, deflate gate nonsense with the Patriots and Tom Brady that the Patriots are going to be the Patriots and when they're 11, 12 games, uh, the Jets before the Geno Smith uh, debacle were probably going to be right there. Uh, Miami, you know, I just still at this point, uh, pro football, I think it was pro focus or one of the websites actually did an article that if you, by going by their scheme or their, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Philosophy. Uh, Ryan Tannehill is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, and I'm sorry. I, I, I don't see it. I think the argument was actually he was better than uh, Andrew Luck because uh, they, they had all these equations they put together. Uh, you know me. I'm certainly not a numbers guy, but I, I just go by what I see, and he's he's to me, he's not, but I, I want to stick with uh, Buffalo and Miami for a moment. Miami, 8-8, eight and eight, Buffalo 9-7 and seven last year. 
but they bring in Ryan. They've been offset with injuries. Uh, hopefully McCoy is healthy for them going forward. But still, the quarterback play of Buffalo. I mean, at the end of the day, is this is this going to be what, what, what helps his team or what hurts his team? Yeah, and the crazy thing is, Rich, for the crucial third preseason game of the season, they're going to give E.J. Manuel his shot, a guy who I thought was buried at the third position. So he's going to go out there and try to get it done. They recently got Fred Jackson back from injury. Uh, they got to get healthy offensively. Let's face it, LaShawn McCoy is shut down until probably the regular season. They need to get him going. Percy Harvin, once again, has a hip injury, and they were looking for him to step up. But uh, this team, if they could have put the semblance of about 13 to 17 points up a game, that defense can play with anybody. So that's what Rex Ryan is counting on, making the games ugly no matter who the quarterback is. And the quarterback, first and foremost, cannot turn the football over. So they're a tough, aggressive team, and I expect them to compete for that second spot in that division. Wow, because it's funny that you said at 13 to 17 points a game. I mean, you're really not – you're basically asking your quarterback, and again, a phrase I can't stand, manage the game and, and not make any mistakes. That's exactly what you're asking them to do. Yeah, they're asking them just to make sure that you're not turning the football all over. And they're going to punt a lot. So, and they may win some ugly games, but they're going to have to find a way to get some of these explosive weapons on the field. I know they've redone that offensive line with Richie Incognito and some of the other guys. And they've got to open some holes for LaShawn McCoy, and hopefully he'll come back healthy. A couple uh, more before I let you get out of here. How about the Miami Dolphins? I mean, this is uh, year number four now under Joe Philbin. Seems like they really have a lot of faith in him going forward. This is a pretty young team as well. Big money contract to Dominic uh, Sue. They certainly have some playmakers. But again, it's going to go under the uh, uh, the quarterback under center. In that case, it's going to be Ryan Tannehill. What are the, uh, I guess you can say, is this a make or break year, year number four for Joe Philbin down in Miami? No doubt about it. Steve Ross, their owner, has put a lot into this team, as you're saying, giving Notocoms to that big contract. They just re-upped Ryan Tannehill, who they believe is their franchise guy. As you, I still have some question marks with him, and particularly that that offense. You know, they're, they're trying to throw a deep ball, and he's not a great deep ball thrower. But uh, maybe he'll improve upon that. They have Devontae Parker coming in. So they have a lot of uh, field people that are there. Um, but the key to that team is going to be that defense. That defense has got to cause some turnovers. And, and they got to win some games down a stretch. They always seem to start fast and fade late. So it, it's something that Miami's got to work on. But right now I'd have to put the Bills ahead of them. Yeah, and don't get me wrong with Tannehill. Like I said, I'm, I'm not putting him in that top ten class just yet. Uh, you know, he, he's 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 got a good arm. He's a smart quarterback. He threw for over 4,000 yards, I think close to 30 touchdown passes. But a lot of those yards also came when you look at some of these games and you break them down. He also had some games where uh, he was throwing some bad picks. I go back to the Green Bay game. That was a close game where he threw a couple bad picks. Uh, they 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 uh, you know they had a stretch where against Buffalo and Kansas City, he didn't play real good football. They were lucky to get a couple of those wins. Um I mean, granted, they blew out the Bills, but I'm just – I'm not sold on him. Um, and, and we kind of agree on that one. Before I let you get out of here, let's uh, switch gears back to our backyard with the Philadelphia Eagles. So I guess the expectation per Sam Bradford is he's going to at least get one half of football under center tomorrow night against the Packers. And I know the Packers are a little skittish, sending Aaron Rodgers out there, especially after Jordy Nelson going down, albeit a non-contact uh, injury, the worst kind. But when you look at Bradford – I guess, would you, would we agree that a half, maybe even in the third quarter with that first-team offense, is exactly the type of look that they need to get from Bradford just to continue to get his feet wet? You sit him preseason game number four, and then uh, you let you, you let the dogs uh, go on the Monday Night Football against the Falcons. Yeah, and, I, and that's the plan, Rich. I, I talked to some folks that are at Eagles practice, and that's what the team seems to be leaning towards. They want to get him at least 25 plays plus this game and as we were saying earlier this is the key game around the National Football League they're putting in the game plan that they're getting for for their first week of the season let's face it the last week they just don't want anybody hurt so they're putting in the game plan and he did get hit last week as we all know by Suggs but he needs to get in the rhythm of a game get hit some more and understand how to make reads make adjustments so this is a big game for Sam Bradford uh, I expect him to be out there working with his receivers and his running back so the Eagles are all in. It seems like they want to win all their preseason games. I don't know what that, how much that means, but uh, they're going to go out there and put forth a, a big effort out there in Lambeau. Uh, they close out the preseason against the Jets, and typically that's where you look at depth. And look, there's some there's some players on the squad that aren't going to make the team, and I think that's a tribute to the depth of this roster. And you look at a guy like Ken John Barner, a running back, but I want to ask you as we close it out, 
Uh, he is a lightning rod. That is Tim Tebow. First cuts come Tuesday. Does Tebow make the first cuts? Do you, even, do you see Tim Tebow making the roster here with the Eagles? Yeah, so the first one's the 75. I definitely think he'll make that. And then it's going to come down between him and Matt Barkley. And it's just listening to the way that Chip Kelly talks about the two quarterbacks, I just think he's leaning towards Tebow and what he brings to the table in terms of mobility to read option. And he's probably seen enough of Matt Barkley. Let's face it, Barkley is a guy brought in by the Andy Reid regime. So uh, I am leaning towards Tim Tebow making his team and uh, get ready for all the Tebow talk every Monday morning. Yeah, well, guess what? It's, it might be Monday morning, but I'm, I'm going to get tired of it pretty fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, if Tim Tebow actually plays, uh, if he has a significant amount of playing time during the regular season, then either they're blowing out teams uh, or Sam Bradford's on the sideline with an injury. <laughs> so you would hope. Yeah. It's-